these uh, these deals around these properties has been a, a very time-consuming and quite laborious task because we've got multiple ownerships. But I think they, David, you deserve a huge um, thanks from from us for, for the work that you've done on New Ferry, uh, the commitment that you've given to going to endless public meetings and speaking to the residents and businesses down there. And I think they, they hold you in high esteem. And I just want to uh, add my my thanks on behalf of the cabinet for the work. Yeah. Okay, so um, can we just actually talk about the recommendations. So they're on page two. Um, we approve the allocation of a sum of 1.3 million from our from the Council Strategic Acquisitions Capital Program to acquire these key sites uh, in New Ferry uh, to assemble for future developments. And secondly, we uh, record our disappointment about government's unhelpful response, but will continue to lobby uh, government for funding to ensure a fair deal for New Ferry. They, they agree, Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, that takes us on then to uh, agenda item three, which is the rural local plan update report. George, you're going to introduce this, please. <coughs> Thank you, Phil. Um, this report provides a cabinet with an update on the, uh, the local plan. The local plan is vital. It's the document which sets out the land use priorities for the next 15 years. Effectively, it decides what can be built where throughout our borough. A solid, effective local plan could not be more important. We are determined to create a local plan which is right for building and right for our residents. We are committed to delivering it as quickly as possible and have invested extra resources to make sure that happens. We have now completed the development options review consultation and we are grateful to every resident who has taken the time to take part. More than 3,000 representations were provided and we will consider each and every one of them as the plan develops. We will publish a summary of these responses in February of 2019. We have also brought in support from our leading QC to advise us on the technical elements of our local plan. We are also grateful to have had the support of the local government association and the planning advisory staff. The next few months we'll see a number of technical studies being required and in this report I am recommending that the scheme of delegation of executive functions is amended to delegate authority to the Director of Economic and Housing Growth in consultation with me as the Cabinet Member. Decisions relating to the approval and publication of the evidence base and associated technical reports. This will enable us to move forward with pace. All policy decisions will remain as they are now with members. As Cabinet is aware, governments have just closed their consultation on the household projections, which were published in September of 2018. Council's position is that we want to use these figures in relation to our local plan. We know these latest, sorry, we know these latest, in our view, more accurate figures will protect much more of our precious green belt land. We have formally submitted our views on this to the government, which are available on our website. We are expecting the outcome of the consultation in January of 2019. Thank you, Phil. Okay, thanks. Uh, thank you, George. Um, just to, to add to, to what you, you said and just to kind of reiterate, so we are we are committed to sticking to the timetable that we've agreed on the local plan. Um, and as you say, George, we've, um, we've secured additional uh, staffing resources to ensure that we deliver on that timetable. Um, I will add my thanks to everybody, all members of the public, and uh, people who participated in the consultation on the development options review. I think um, 3,000 responses was a really good outcome.
we'll get the analysis of that, as you say, in, in, in February back to, um, to Cabinet. Um, I think the, the other thing I just wanted to comment on was, um, and it's in a recommendation for, we, we uh, responded to the consultation by reiterating our support for the lower OMS housing projection figure. We feel that's more uh, a re an accurate reflection of our housing need, and crucially, it will also um, uh, reduce the pressure on us to release um, uh, sites within the Green Belt, which, as you say, George, we want to protect um, uh, 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 every opportunity. So uh, I hope the government listens to our representations. Um, I'm assuming we'll get some kind of announcement um, in the new year, uh, in January, around what they're, they're going to uh, recommend in terms of um, these housing projections. But I think um, we need to keep the pressure on, on them to say that we, we think the, the lower OMS um, figure of 488 new dwellings per annum is, is the right figure for, for the rule. And let's just hope we're, we're listened to. Um, so we'll await the outcome of that with interest. Okay, Phil, you want to come in? Uh, thanks, Phil. I, I just want to add my thanks to all the residents who have taken the time to write in and take part in this consultation. It's really important that um, Westminster and the Secretary of State know uh, that we care deeply about our being part of the world and we won't see it taken off as well. I just want to reflect for a moment that uh, when the local plan was first put forward, there was a, a veneer of evidence around those targets that the government enforced upon the council. But since that time, the ONS has been very clear in its recommendations to the actual housing growth in the world to drop significantly. As you stated, per year now, if we follow the ONS figures, we only be required to go full AD per year. That would require some release of green belt, but a very small amount compared to that which the government is now demanding. I think if the government does not allow us to follow the ONS figures, it will show this entire thing to be political scam that it actually is. And I just want to say right now that they have to follow your own figures. If they don't, then shame to them. What's a shame to them? And the people will, will know exactly what it is. Yeah. Okay, Bernie? I'm just going to echo some of what Phil's just said. I think both the reports that we've had today shows the government are working directly against what we're trying to achieve for the people of the world. And they're both blatantly obvious this government is, is not there to defend the people of, of will or to defend what it is what we need and if anything is, is working against what we're trying to achieve. Um, I think that somebody should point out to the government that they're, that they're, they're out to, to look after the needs and then, of, of everybody in the UK, not just people in London or people that they choose to look after. But the ONS figures are, 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 are clear. Um, the 488 figures a much easier, better figure for us for our housing um, projections and as well as that to protect the green belt here in world. And it's the same as the new ferry arguments, you know, we need they need to listen to the people of world and they need to do what's best for the people of world um, and take our views into account. Okay, good. Okay. Paul? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Charlie. I just want to echo um, what my colleagues have said to uh, the Green Belt and the lower uh, ONS figures. Um, but I also want to comment on the landowners as well, so especially of the brown, um, brown field sites. Um, we can have those lower ONS figures, but unless Peel come out and actually start to build the properties that they promise the people of the world in the press, then that lower figure will still mean that we'll have to build extensively in the Green Belt because they are set on some of the largest blocks of land across the world. And unless they're prepared to put the money where the mouth is, um, we're still going to end up having to fall onto uh, the green belt to meet those targets. So I, I'm happy that um, planning has um, the first phase of, of building uh, down in the waters. Um, and the sooner they start building, the better. Um, but they, they really do need to up, um, up the, the, the game when it comes to the building on, on the, the land that they own. Mm -hmm. and, and I hope that they put an adequate response in as well as part of this consultation um, that, that can be backed up by fact and not rhetoric um, so that they can contribute to minimising the amount, if any, that we need to build on the green belt. Okay. Um, 
yeah, uh, I think on that last point, our, our policy has always been brownfield first. I think that remains the policy. And I think, you know, George as the cabinet member for housing has written to all um, owners of, of brownfield sites with planning permissions to say, you know, get on and build those houses that you've got planning permission for. And obviously, you know, he'll fall into that category. And it was good to see the planning permission agreed last week for World Waters 1. Um, that's great news, but um, we, need, we need a lot more to come forward. And as you say, Paul, um, we need Peel to come forward with the evidence that will stand up in front of the planning inspector that they will be building additional properties in, in the next, um, uh, the next sort of 15 years. So let's hope that the yeah, evidence is forthcoming um, as a matter of urgency. Um, okay, so I think we, um, sorry, Bernie, you want to talk about Yeah, um, I, just, I just want to add, um, I, I've, I've read, um, I think it's in the newspaper today, that they'll say that you've got to overcome a, a number of barriers before they can start building, and I, I'd, I'd like to know what the barriers are, because we need to make sure that any barriers they're facing towards starting to build needs to be overcome, so um, I think we should look into seeing exactly what they're saying these barriers are, so that we can get on with building as quickly as possible. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think we'll, we'll play our part as, um, as the local authority in, in helping Peel to get on and develop as quickly as possible. Um, but what we need to see now is actions, exactly. not words, but we need actions. Um, yeah, so Churchill used to sign it, all these members say action this day, yes. and I think that's the, that's the thing that's that we need from Peel. Okay, so uh, unless anybody has got any other comments, so you can see the recommendations that George has moved on page 10. Uh, can we agree those recommendations? Okay, thank you. Um, right, I've not been informed of any other business. It just remains for me to uh, wish everybody a very happy Christmas and successful new year, and can I thank uh, particularly can I thank the officers for the uh, excellent support that they've given uh, us during the last 12 months.